Portions of the following episode were recorded after the coronavirus pandemic started, but before the murder of George Floyd and related protests. We know these events have had and will continue to have tremendous impact on our lives and our community, and of course, the work of artists. We assert that Black Lives Matter and will be working on content that deal with such topics. As always, we'd love to hear more about what you'd like to hear from us. Stay tuned for ways to reach out to us at the end of the show. Welcome to the Relief Podcast from the Akron Art Museum. Comfort and joy for these uncertain times. I'm Seema Rao, Deputy Director and Chief Experience Officer. And I'm Gina Thomas-McGee, Curator of Education. So today's topic is collage. Um, And I uh, was in my daughter's room the other day, and she is really, really hitting the middle school hard. And so she had taken um, something that I had forgotten I used to do, put up all these pictures from magazines. And her whole wall has become uh, just all the things. And very sadly, they are um, her bucket list for summer, uh, like going to the beach. And we have a lot of family in California, so going to California to see her cousin who's a baby um and i have been kind of gentle with her and i said you know that bucket list shouldn't be for summer it should be for the future um (laughs) but collage is something that i never really thought about but it's part of our lives yeah and i'm so glad like that makes me so happy to hear that middle schoolers are still doing this because i didn't know if if kids are not like don't have access to print material in the same way they did when i was growing up because like I made collages all the time, ripping out stuff from magazines. And mostly mine were like pictures of like from Teen Bop and stuff (laughs) of people I had crushes on. So like Zac Efron. (laughs) No, no, I'm older than that for sure. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Mine would have been like, I don't know, um, like the Corey's was a little bit before me, but I would have been like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Jonathan Brandis. I will say Leonardo DiCaprio. They had to watch the um, Leonardo DiCaprio Romeo and Juliet. And I was like, oh, he was so cute. Now he's not. But like, it reminded me of that moment. But so she is doing, I mean, this, this is the thing about collage, right? It, I think it's so pervasive. And even if you look at, I was, I was talking to somebody about um, the um, uh, illustrations, botanical illustrations. And in some ways, those are an intellectual collage, right? Because you see the illustration in the middle oftentimes, and then there's a border around it. Even though it's all been drawn, it's actually different ideas put together. Um, and actually, she's, she has no magazines. We don't get magazines anymore. I hate paper, so I don't um, really want it, even though I've been having to write, I write things down on weird scripts of paper, and then I recycle it. Uh, she used up all of our colored ink from our printer. <laughs> I was wondering if that's what it was, if she had been printing out things she wanted. Yeah. Oh, but she's doing like a, what do you call that? Like an inspiration board or that's something. That's right. That's right. And you know what? It's smart. She's, I mean, I, I support her initiative, right? Like that's part of it and putting things together for people who are looking a lot of people have said to me creativity or learning new expressions getting new hobbies is something they're trying to do during this time when they have in some ways more time I know I wouldn't say we actually have more time during social isolation it's just different time is different you're not in the car as often but then your brain is like used up looking for things to occupy yourself collage is actually very accessible absolutely because the material is like whatever you have right whatever you have around. So a collage is essentially putting together different materials into one grouping, right? So like when I was little, it would have been pictures of the, you know, shortstop <gasps> Kenny Lofton that I would have been cutting out and putting on my notebooks because uh, I loved him. Um, but maybe it's like we have some works in the collection that are collages and it's like a collage and print together where artists has taken um, ticket stubs and like metro tickets and put them together with his prints. Those are so cool. But just things you have. I mean, I think there was a really big craze uh, not too long ago in scrapbooking. And that's kind of like collage too, right? Yeah. Yeah. People love that. And I mean, it's it can be a really interesting way of working because you have within what you're creating, sometimes you have these like artifacts that are, you know, remnants of the past or even somebody else's past that you can work into your own finished piece. 
So I don't want to give anybody an assignment, but when you say that, that makes me think, um, I've read a lot of people talk about journaling their social isolation, and drawing is, is challenging to people, but I do think a lot of people could journal using just the artifacts of this experience. You know, the the one time every two weeks you go to the grocery store and, I don't know, your junk mail that you're so excited to finally get mail. <laughs> the photographs you take when you're standing in a Zoom call. You could actually do some really beautiful collages out of this experience. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I don't know if anybody wants that assignment, please do it and um, send us photos or tag us if you're posting them. I would love to see that. That's a great idea. but. I also think the bigger thing for me is that collage for me is about being willing to put things together in surprising ways and being okay with it. Because um, the collages that are on my daughter's wall are not the collages I would put together, and that's totally okay. Definitely. I mean, and you know what's funny is I talk about a lot in the galleries the Micheline Thomas work, which I believe we've discussed on a previous episode if you're all caught up with that. But the Micheline Thomas work that we have up right now, it is... It is a painting, but it's based on a collage that she's made. And I always talk about it as if, um, like, let's pretend it's a self-portrait and it is a collage of who she is because she's putting together all of these pieces that make up her identity. So it's like her family background, her interest in art history, um, stuff about her mother, stuff about her community. And she's collaging all of those ideas together into this painting, even though she's not pictured in it. So we are all collages, right? We're all just these little pieces that are thrown together in order to make a whole person. Um, but that's a great lesson too, because it's beautiful. And it has to be, right? I mean, we have to be made up of so many of these different components um, in order to be our whole selves, whatever that looks like at each day, you know? I mean, not your perfect self, just your whole self. <laughs> well, I mean, like these, all these episodes, right, are about being in social isolation and learning to find uh, inspiration in some ways and being okay with the life we lead. But that's a huge lesson, putting things together. I mean, I, um, once years ago when I was teaching uh, high school, one of my students said, oh, you look like a Crayola crayon box, Ms. Rao. And, um, and I have to admit, I dress... So, so another person, another student said to me, you dress like you um, get dressed in the dark. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, and I was said to, I remember actually both of them I found, I was like, that's sort of what I'm going for. I mean, I like a lot of color and I don't mind, you know, and I think these things go together. But actually there's something really powerful about col a good collage. You can see when something is well done, like the Micheline Thomas and actually her study as well. Um, and the, the work that we're going to talk about later, the Rauschenberg, when we turned it over to Reggie, but that a good collage is actually all about composition. It's putting all these weird parts together and making it work. And you're right. That's advice for life. <laughs> Definitely. Like finding balance and using what you have. I mean, that's a good message for right now, for sure. Like try to, you know, be a balanced composition and use what you have and, you know, rework it until it's done. I feel like that's such an interesting lesson that we can learn from artists is like, when is it done? You know, when do you, when do you just call it and say like, this is as good as it's going to get. If I go any further, it's just going to actually complicate things or make things worse. Um, artists have to become experts at that, in my opinion. And, you know, that's learning to let go and learning to stop <laughs> messing around with something is a great lesson. It is true. I mean, we work on, we don't, we're often writing quite a lot in interpretation. And when a label goes to print, it, it, there's a feeling like you have to be done with it because you can't reprint it. It's going to cost you money. Um, but that's our intellectual production. It's not our work. It's not our, I mean, it is our job, but it's not the same as making art. And for an artist, there's a whole nother level of it is done. Um, I, I do, I have seen artists when, you know, I've been, you know, working in museums for a long time who walk into the galleries with their stuff. And I always think what, what that must feel like, cause you can't do anything to it anymore. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to like turn it over to somebody. That's another great lesson for uh, COVID. You have to turn it over to somebody. I think that, you know, we're living in this time where everything has been turned over to our government and to, you know, there's so many regulations of what you can do all of a sudden. And, uh, you know, it's not like we can go to the store, just 
hang out. You know, we can't just go shopping for fun in the same way. So many changes. Yeah, there's so much that's out of our control. So I feel like if you if you need a project where you feel very in control, collage would be great for that. Because it's sort of like methodical, like you're cutting pieces, you're laying them down, you're creating your own puzzle. Um, You have control over that. It might be really therapeutic right now. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, I picked, we picked, we often pick uh, Gina's favorites. We're picking one of my favorites today. Um, I love Robert Rauschenberg. I just, I love the work. This is somebody who's worked in collage for a long time, and we have a number of Rauschenbergs, but we picked one that is collage. What I love about Robert Rauschenberg's collage, uh, we talked about balance and composition. I think his works are all about balance and composition. If you took any one part, you'd be like, huh? And then you put them together, and you're like, oh, that visually works. Yeah, and I mean, what a skill to have. Like, you have to hone your eye for so long to be able to do something like that. But, I mean, he probably did it over and over and over and over again, right? Playing around with it, getting it just right. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm going to turn it over to our colleague, Reggie. Hey guys, it's the museum's curator of community engagement, Reggie, and I'm here with this week's Deep Dive. This week, we're talking about collage with Robert Rauschenberg's 1981 work, Arcanum No. 10. In this piece, which is about two feet by one foot, we see a gray, almost pixelated background with images that seem to fade in and out of one another, almost like an old newspaper. It's hard to make out exactly what we're seeing, but on the left there seems to be a mirrored image of a rocket bursting through clouds, and on the right there are two basketball players. Collaged on top of this background are a few color images, one showing some kind of pipe and another showing what seems to be the entrance of a church. So, in short, there's a lot going on in this work. This collage is part of a series of 13 works called Arcanum. The word Arcanum or Arcana can have a few different meanings, but in this instance it refers to secrets. Rauschenberg was interested in the mysterious places where the spiritual and physical worlds coalesce, contradict, or mirror one another. And in Arcanum 10, we see that interplay at its most salient. The artist has overlapped the entrance to a place of worship over two very concretely human activities, sports and invention. It was no accident that Rauschenberg chose collage as a medium for this series. The collage process is a literal manifestation of the piecing together that humans do when we try to contemplate our physical realities and the spiritual world. Can the grace of a master athlete be chalked up to evolution? Or is there some other higher power at play? When a rocket leaves the earth and meets the heavens, have humans achieved that out of sheer force? Or is there some kind of act of the divine involved? I don't think Rauschenberg is giving us an answer, but instead, I think he's asking us to ask questions like this, and in doing so, try to piece together the great collage of human existence for ourselves. And with that tall order from Mr. Rauschenberg, I'm gonna head out, but I'll see you back here next time for another deep dive. Thanks for unpacking all those layers, Reggie. Now it's time for the last piece of the collage that is this episode. We're going to throw it over to Caitlin for this week's Shop Talk with Justin Michael Will. Caitlin here for Shop Talk with Justin Michael Will. Justin is an artist living in Cleveland, Ohio, and his work is so playful. It's full of patterns, colors, and imagination, making it so refreshing to see his drawings or to even watch him draw if you get the chance. He's created zines, drawings like I mentioned, beer can labels, murals, clothing, and the list goes on. He is also one of the 15 visual artists for the Akron Art Mail Project, a partnership between the museum and the Akron Summit County Library. And without further ado, here's Justin Michael Wills, Shop Talk. Thank you so much. I know you've been quite bombarded with the museum for some projects recently. So thank you for doing this one too. Happy to help. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. So what are your thoughts on this Robert Rauschenberg piece that we have in our collection? So I took a peek at it um, right away. I really enjoy it. I think there's a lot of different things going on on it. As a collage, it's 
it's made of a lot of different elements, but my big thing I think I get is like isolation or separation, but um, not in any bad way. I, I think the elements, like the really like poppy color illustrative elements that are like kind of stacking up, you know, uh, through the center and off to the right, that's what drives my eye and that's where my curiosity kind of goes. And I, I, I love it. I, I think it's awesome. You know, it's, it feels kind of broody and I don't know, it, it feels like airy and I don't know. It's, it's really cool. It's, it's super interesting piece. Yeah, I like that um, you brought up that it's like an isolated looking piece because a lot of the parts are separated, which is to me the opposite of your work. Um, your work doesn't really feel too isolated. It's very fun and energetic. But I also like that you mentioned these vibrant areas of his work because that like blue line with the arrows and all these different kind of wave like patterns within it reminded me of your work in some way. And I know you're not a collage artist, but does collage in any form of the word mean anything to you or your work or your life? Yeah, I mean, so looking at this and thinking about other collage pieces I've seen, I, I appreciate that it's kind of taking ideas and images and, you know, that are already kind of out, out there and making new things. My work, like you said, I, I, I kind of go a different route. And, and at first, the idea of collage kind of scares me because of what could be and dwelling on that too long, you know? But I, I really like the, the kind of like might force an artist to do something they might not usually do or, you know, they kind of have to look at it in a different way if they're utilizing elements to do a collage. And yeah, just like looking at this piece again, yeah, those arrows like that, that drives you right to an area of the piece. And then you start asking yourself, why am I looking there? What's in that little space there that's darker than the rest? And it kind of tells a story, which is really cool. And I like to do that in my work too, you know, um, either tell a story or kind of set the stage for a story that could be interpreted. Now, at any point in your career, did you ever use like found imagery in your work? Or have you always been somebody to create the idea um, or the image? This is more just a side question. I'm just curious. (laughs) it's okay yeah um i I know i've i've used some elements before you know especially uh probably when i went to school and um was trying to find my way and like figure out what what i like to do the most and what clicked i do i have always loved patterns and just like broad fields of color and busyness compared to isolated areas of simpler color so i definitely i tend to like photograph my work or or place it on a backdrop of existing colors and shapes I think a lot of the times I make those backgrounds up, but I have used like anything from like magazines to um, like the 12 by 12 scrapbooking squares that you find in hobby yeah. stores. You know? Okay. Um, Cause they just add that other layer that, you know, that makes your eye kind of move around. It lets you debate like if you're where you're going to look. Okay. I like yeah. that. And kind of unrelated to this, but maybe related to your practice. What's the first thing that you do in the morning? Um, I mean, kind of like everybody else, I wake up, I feed my cat, I feed my rabbit, I have a coffee, but I really try to jump into drawing right right away. I've I've said a lot, it's it's really like a therapy for me. So it's it's kind of like I want to jump right in, focus my energy and thoughts on something solid that I can wrap my head around, you know? And I I try to do like, I, I do that fairly in a strict way to myself, I think, kind of just to keep my my skill up, you know, just to like a musician plays their instrument every single day i i feel like i have to use a pen on paper as early as i can i don't know if it's like a weird fear that i'll forget from the day before somehow but it just kind of helps me ease into and like start my day and like pare down my thoughts from there okay to do it right away almost as a way to not forget it is interesting (laughs) (laughs) loosely related what are your three desert island studio needs um this is going to be so like one-sided because it's all drawing based, but paper, a pen, and this is so generic, but music. Yeah. I feel like that would be important. You know, I wish I was a, a artist that could just kind of focus on hearing the media hitting the paper or the canvas or like the ethereal elements in the background. But again, that makes me just think too much and distract myself too much. So I, I really, I, I dig listening to music like throughout the whole time. So that's like a beautiful combination. Very simple, but um, do you have like a specific playlist that you use or is it different every day with what you're vibing to? Um, I'm, I'm always look. I'm one of those people who's always looking for new music. Like I have my old standards that I, that I listen to, but yeah, I make, I make, I actually make a lot of playlists 
and I'm, I've illustrated them and, and posted them sometimes and shared them um, just to see if other people have feedback and like can suggest, you know, new music. But yeah, it's kind of all over the place. Up tempo. I don't know, like, what am I into lately? Like Latin jazz or hip hop or I'm diving back into pavement again, too. I don't okay. Know. Yeah. I've been um, listening to a lot of Latin jazz myself, so I dig that. <laughs> right? It's so good. It it's is. Like, it gets you going. And it's so, like, refreshing, and you feel like you could just dance the whole time. It's, yeah. it's great. Out of those three, would you pick one of those as your favorite tool, or do you have something completely off the charts that I wouldn't expect? That tool such a, like, huge, vast realm. I'm, I yes. think I'm going to... I'm going to say a pen. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, writing, uh, drawing, sharing thoughts, instructing people, vlogging things, again, just for therapy and for mental, like it just feels, I've been drawing since I can remember. So it's, it just feels like a natural extension of myself. So. Okay. Yeah, and definitely. you mentioned brush pen, but want to be even more specific or just any good old pen? Um, if we're talking like getting sponsored, Pentel brush pens are Pentel? amazing. Okay. But yeah, any, I, I like a brush pen by, by most uh, people that make them just because there's the very line width, you know, so you can dive in and out of texture, exaggerate your line in one stroke. And there's that little bit of like uncontrollable, um, like when you use a new paper and you're not sure how it's going to hit. And I kind of like that, you know, that you might, you might make a mistake or not get the line right because I feel like it looks more like you drew it. So let's hope Pentel listens in and uh, we can put this out into the ether that they can sponsor you for life. I'm, I'm, I've been using them forever, so. <laughs> You're a good candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Generally speaking, through this, these past, I don't even know how many months of COVID and Black Lives Matter, the list goes on and on. What's your silver lining during all of this? I think for me, and I, I, I hammer this out into the ether with my work, um, I think being hopeful, um, just forcing myself to be hopeful, thinking that because of everything that's happening, something has to change and, and just hoping that that change will be for the better. I think that things can't ever really improve or shift drastically without a lot of pain, unfortunately. And we, we all see the, all of the many horrible, horrible things that are happening right now. And that's all we see when we look at our devices. So I feel like trying to hope and like focus on the few and far between things that are good that we see changing. That's, that's like my silver lining, like hoping that, you know, an older generation will change to see things new and a newer generation help keep the change going to help us sustain and, and just hoping that I can learn from things and, and that everybody does. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's a great time to learn for sure, um, especially with time at home. And speaking of something helpful, you posted your bunny and your cat last <laughs> night. They were just cuddling together. Does that yeah. happen often? So they get into tussles. They're, they're very interested in each other. That was the longest. I posted it because that was the longest they laid. They just kind of laid shoulder to shoulder for like 20 minutes. I thought they were maybe sleeping. They were just <laughs> filling out. And it was amazing. Yeah, I like stopped what I was doing and just watched them. Yeah, yeah that was, was so precious. Um, so I'm glad you shared it. Yeah, of course. Um, so kind of quick... Uh, response questions. I have five. Five? Yeah, this or that question. Are you ready? Yeah, go for it. Old or new? Man. New. New? Okay. Yeah. Half full or half empty? Half full. Morning or night? Morning, for sure. Mm -hmm. Fast or slow? That one's tricky. <laughs> Really good. Um, because I always go too fast, I'm going to say slow. Okay. Yeah. Something that I think we can all embrace more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and my last one, salty or sweet? Oh, um, these are both traumatizing to my, to my <laughs> all the time, but uh, salty for sure. I'm more of a savory and salty. Do you have a snack or salty thing you prefer? Um, really anything, unfortunately, but, uh, I think my like really big guilty one is potato chips. Yeah. Just some, uh, again, sponsor maybe, um, 
Cape Cod's 40% reduced soda, right? Yes, Cape Cod is so good. Like any of the flavors, I just tried the jalapeno one. Oh yeah, very good. All right, Cape Cod and Pentel. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, do you want to comment on any upcoming projects you're working on or anything you're looking forward to get into? Um, sure, yeah. I've, um, I've been doing, so like a lot of us, our, our, our studios have shifted, our, um, our shows, our, everything we had planned kind of shifted. So I had to make some changes and I don't really have like a huge reason to create a new body of work. So I'm doing some animation, which has been fun. Yeah, I'm using like Procreate, Rough Animator, um, keeping it simple, but I'm doing a couple projects for two um, Cleveland musicians and we'll be releasing info soon. So that'll be cool. cool. Yeah, and I'm going to do another, um, I released some shirts in the beginning of the year, and I'm going to put out, I think, a, a nice long sleeve cozy shirt for fall, probably in October. Keep an eye out for that. And I also want to comment on um, the Akron Art Mail project. Uh, you've been working with my coworker, Reggie, on. Um, yeah. So this is a project where these postcards, we thought everything's so digital, let's put things back out physically. So we commissioned 15 visual artists, including you and 10 writers to create postcards. What was the inspiration for yours? So I, yeah, it's an awesome opportunity. So I kind of took the approach that I take in the morning when I wake up and draw. And so I did kind of a, a little quick comic of showing an embrace, showing someone a little bee sleeping, I think, and a bug eating, just like simple things we do every day. I thought it would be really cool since uh, we're doing, I was doing a hundred of the cards to say today is going to be, and then I wrote in, I hand lettered in a hundred different things that today might be. <laughs> so. Oh, I didn't know that was, the, okay. That's yeah. incredible. Some of them are funny and silly. Some of them are serious. Some of them are happy. Yeah. Yeah. And that you individualized all of them. Was it hard to come up with a hundred things? It was. <laughs> <laughs> I got to like 50 and I was like, oh yeah, this is great. This is super easy. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to have to start looking up adjectives. and <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was because I, I didn't want to repeat anything. So right. Yeah. Well, I admire that commitment. Thank it's you. It's incredible. All right, excellent. So um, we are so happy to be doing this and reaching out to you. If you want to reach back out to us, please do give us a call. Phone number is 330-790-1622 or throw us an email at podcast at akronartmuseum.org. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Relief Podcast from the Akron Art Museum. Comfort and joy for these uncertain times. Relief Podcast is a production of the Akron Art Museum. Today, you heard from museum staff members Seema Rao, Gina Thomas-McGee, Reggie Lynch, and Caitlin Evans, along with our guest artist, Justin Michael Will. Special thank you to Jordan King, who wrote and performed all the podcast theme music. Until next time, take care and live creative.